Hello again, and this time I welcome Ron Bonica. He's a distinguished engineer specializing in IPv6 and segment routing and working at Juniper Networks for over 17 years now. He's active in the Internet Engineering Task Force, having authored or co-authored 20 RFC documents and served as a co-director for the IETF Operations and Management Area. Uh, area. Ron currently co-chairs the IETF V6 Ops and uh, OPSEC Working Group. His presentation uh, describes recent enhancement to ping and traceroute as per RFC 5837 and RFC 8335. And he also describes recent implementations. And if you have any questions, please use the question function on the right. We will have a short question and answer session afterwards. So, Ron, the stage is yours. Hello, thank you very much. I'd like to talk to you this morning about some enhancements we've done to ping and traceroute. You'll find these enhancements in some versions of Linux, um, Wireshark, TCP Dump, and Junos. Uh, our company's operating system. But before I start, I'd like to give credit to the people who actually did the work. Um, there were some developers, uh, one from Juniper Networks who did the work in uh, our operating system, and um, four undergraduates from Harvey Mudd College in the United States who did the commits to Linux and Wireshark, and, um, well, at least commits to Linux, uh, and some bug fixes in Wireshark. And you know, I mentored the project uh, along with Zach Dodds, a professor from Harvey Mudd College. So let's talk a little bit about the IP OAM toolkit. Ping and trace route are the most commonly used in the OAM toolkit. You've probably used them today. Um, today we're going to talk about what they do, how they uh, how they work, what they can't do and how they can be enhanced. And we'll start with ping. Ping tests the liveness of a reachable interface. And reachable is um, emphasized here. It cannot test the liveness of an unreachable interface. Uh, and it tests the liveness of that reachable interface by testing the live, uh, uh, it, it also tests the liveness of a reachable node by testing the liveness of one of its interfaces. So let's talk a little bit about how it works. A probing node sends an ICMP echo to a probed interface. The probed interface sends an ICMP echo reply back to the probing node. Now, some uh, nerd notes here, uh, some details. The ICMP echo message may enter the probe node through any of its interfaces and the echo reply may leave the probe node through any of its interfaces. So there is absolutely no guarantee that either ICMP message traversed the probed interface. Um, let's say you have a node with three interfaces. You are uh, pinging interface number three. The echo request can go in through one, the reply can leave through interface two, and the response is about three but three must be reachable. Now, what can't ping do? Well, it can't test the liveliness of a less than reachable interface. Now, what is a less than reachable interface? Maybe an IPv4 unnumbered interface, an IPv6 um, unicast, uh, 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 an IPv6 interface, with a narrowly scoped address, uh, a link local address, a ULA, it doesn't have a global address. Or for that matter, any interface that the probing node doesn't have a route to. That's a less than reachable interface. So ping can't reach it, it can't test the, um, it can't test the liveliness of that interface. So how can we enhance ping? And this is RFC 8335. A probing node sends an echo re request to a proxy interface. Uh, and, it's a, and it's an extended echo request. It's a new ICMP type. 
the proxy interface sends an extended uh, echo reply to the probing node. And the extended echo reply reports the liveliness of the probed interface. So what happens here? Well, we have an example on the next slide. Nick's machine has the probing interface on it. And you really want to probe interface three. Unfortunately, interface three is not reachable from Nick's machine. Um, so you send an extended ICMP echo message to the proxy, interface two. And that message is addressed to interface two, but it has a question in it. How is interface three doing? Interface two sends a response back. Interface three is up. Now, some nerd notes about this ex uh, extended ping. The proxy interface can be different from the probed interface, and in most cases, it is. The proxy interface much, must be reachable from the probing node, and the proxy interface must reside on one of the following, either the same node as the probed interface or a node that's directly connected to the probed interface. And here's an example. Um, you'll see ping, you're identifying the um, probed interface by name here, minus E, G, E, 0, 0, 0. The proxy interface is 10.0.1.28. And you will get a response back. And the response is telling you how interface GE000 is doing. Now, an interesting thing about this, the um, probed interface, it can be identified by name as it is here in this slide. It can also be identified by uh, IF index or by a local address. Say it's an IPv6 link link local. Um, it can be uh, identified by that kind of address. That is provided that there is only one, one interface on that node with that address. Some security considerations. This should not be enabled by default. Um, and the reason why is it does give um, somebody looking to get information about your network a way to figure out things like what interface names are. And once you know what an interface name is, you might be able to guess the, uh, the OS that it's running or the speed of the interface or something like that. And it should also be accessible from specified source addresses only. For instance, um, if a node receives an extended echo request, it should probably only respond if that echo request is from the NOC or from some trusted source. Their implementations in Junos 23R1, Linux kernel uh, 5.13, Linux IP uh, util ping, that commit is in progress. In fact, it might be done by now. Um, Wireshark 3.5 and TCP dump in progress. Now let's talk a little bit about enhancements to Traceroute. What does it do? It elicits feedback from each node on a delivery path between a probing interface and a destination interface. And here the word node is what we're going to emphasize. Uh, it identifies nodes along the delivery path. How does it work? The probing node sends a series of UDP packets to a destination. It sets the TTL on the first packet to one, so it expires on the first node along the delivery path. It increments the TTL uh, on each subsequent probe uh, so that it expires on the next node along the path. And when a packet expires on a node along the delivery path, that node sends an ICMP time expired message to the probe, probing node. Now, some nerd notes on this. Regarding that UDP message, uh, by default, uh, on the first packet, the probing node sets the UDP destination to 33434. 
it increments the UDP destination port on each subsequent packet. And regarding the time expired message, source address uh, selection is a little bit interesting. Uh, the source address may not identify the interface, interface upon which the probe message arrived. Um, in IPv4, it identifies the interface through which the ICMP uh, time expired message left. In IPv6, it's complicated. There are complicated rules for um, source address selection, and it will vary from implementation to implementation. Now, what can't Traceroute do? It can't identify the interfaces along the delivery path. When you do a Traceroute and you get responses back from a bunch of addresses, that doesn't mean that the packet entered the node through that address or that it would have left the node through that address. It just means that that address is an address on the box that the packet visited. So, how do we enhance um, Traceroute? And here we have RFC 5837. Uh, the probe message is unchanged. The ICMP time expired message contains some extensions, and the extensions can identify the interface upon which the probe arrived, the interface through which the message would have been routed had the TTL not expired, and some attributes of those interfaces their name, their IPU address, their MTU. And here is an example. Um, in the example, we do a trace route to 3333, um, and you will get a response back saying that it uh, entered the box through 10.0.0.2, it would have gone out through 20.001, um, and the next hop at the other side of that would have been 20.002. Um, so you're learning an awful lot more about the path that the packet traversed. Basically, you're getting per interface details, and you're getting some details about each interface, like what was its MTU. And here is a, uh, I apologize for the eye chart. This is um, Wireshark doing a packet capture on an enhanced trace route. Again, the same security considerations. You probably don't want to enable this by default because you're giving out information about your network. Um, you know, MTUs and uh, what, what, what the names of interfaces are, things like that. Also, this should be accessible from specified source addresses only. Um, you, if a uh, trace route comes in from, say, your NOC or some trusted address, then send the extensions. Otherwise, do not send the extensions on the uh, time expired message. And here we have some implementations. Uh, on Junos QFX, you'll see it. Uh, Linux kernel, the commits in progress. Um, Linux IP utils traceroute, commit in progress, and Wireshark 3.5. That's all I have, and I will open to questions. Thank you um, for the nice talk. Uh, currently, we have just one question here. Um, is there a mechanism for discovering interfaces that the proxy knows about? Hmm. Okay, so um, no, there isn't. There isn't a way to send a message to the pro proxy and say what interfaces are on this box. Okay. Thanks again for um, that very interesting talk about um, tools I think we have now in everyday use and uh, the enhancement about that. And yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you with us and have a nice day. Well, thank you.